Find your name on the list or type it in. Then choose Start. L I N G. Hi, I'm Reader Rabbit. And I'm Sam the Lion. Welcome, Welcome to our, our reading adventure. adventure. Special delivery for Reader Rabbit and Sam the Lion. That was fast. I hope you'll enjoy your books. See you later. Hmm. Which book should we read first? Our books. Now what'll we do? Look. It's the story of the princess and the pea. And there's the goose that laid the golden egg. You can help Sam and me. Click on the book you want to read. Rawr! Good choice. <laughs> The Princess and the Pea. Click on the character you want to tell the story. Rawr. Thanks for choosing me, Sam the Lion. Let me tell you the story of the Princess and the Pea. Click here if you want me to read the story. Click here and we can read the story together. Let's read the story together. Click on Sam to hear all of the words. Here are the special words in this story. Mattress, pea, prince, princess, queen, Mary, castle, kingdom. Let's match and order things from the story. I have some questions about the story. No problem. Let's look at my story map. It has all the important words and events from the story. Count two. Not again. Oh, my story map is a mess. You can help read a rabbit. Click on story match to match words and pictures. Click on story order to put events in the right order. Okay, let's match words to pictures from the story. My map is all messed up. You've got to help me. Click on a picture and then click on the matching word. Princess, princess. My name is Princess Laurel. Queen, queen, queen. Only a princess will pass my test. Lightning, lightning. Table, table. Ladder, ladder. Thanks! Now all the words match the pictures, so I can read my story map. You did it! <laughs> Click here when you're done with your map. Time for a party! Click on me and you can play the map game again. All right! Count two. Not again! Oh, my story map is a mess! You can help read a rabbit. Click on story match to match words and pictures. Click on story order to put events in the right order. Just look. All the events from the story are in the wrong order. Travel along the road and put all of the pictures in the right order. Laurel saw the bed that was 20 mattresses high.
Laurel saw the bed that was twenty mattresses high. What tall beds they have here! The prince wanted to marry someone kind and smart. The prince wanted to marry someone kind and smart. I want to marry someone who is smart and kind, and funny. The king opened the door and saw a wet girl outside. Can I come in? I'm getting really wet. The queen lifted the mattress, and nothing was there. The queen lifted the mattress, and nothing was there. The pea? Where is it? The queen asked Laurel, "How did you sleep?" So, how did you sleep? Yahoo! Now everything is in order, so I can read my story map. All right. Time for a party. Click on me, and you can play again. Let's write a letter. I have some things I'd like to say to the story characters. I know. Let's write a letter. Can you help me? You can help. Click on the character you want to write to. Okay, let's write to the princess. Click on Sam to begin. Dear Princess Laurel, were you a good at princess school? Click on any picture to help Sam write the letter. Click on OK when you're ready to go on. Singer. La 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 la. Were you a good singer at princess school? If Baseball player. Were you a good baseball player at princess school? Student. Were you a good student at princess school? Click on Sam to hear the letter. Princes. You must have learned all about princes. Peas. You must have learned all about peas, castles. You must have learned all about castles. Click on Sam to hear the letter. Yummy. Mmm. I think peas are too yummy to be used in tests. Silly. <laughs> I think peas are too silly to be used in tests. Messy. I think peas are too messy to be used in tests. Click on Sam to hear the letter. Worms. You should make a new test using worms. Eggs. You should make a new test using eggs. Pizza. You should make a new test using pizza. Click on Sam to hear the letter. Your pal, Sam. Click on Sam to hear the letter. Restaurant. P.S. Maybe you could start your own restaurant. School. P.S. Club. P. Click on Sam to hear the whole letter. Dear Princess Laurel, were you a good student at princess school? You must have learned all about castles. I think peas are too messy to be used in tests. You should make a new test using pizza. Your pal, Sam. P. S. 
Maybe you could start your own club. Click on the mailbox to send your letter. Speedy Snail here. Got anything to mail? Oh, I don't know. This could take a while. <coughs> Special delivery for Sam from Princess Laurel. Click on the princess to hear her letter. Dear Sam, a pizza test would be so yummy. It would really fill my tummy. I would toss the dough up high, then shape it into a pizza pie. But the hardest part, you know, would be to keep track of the dough. I have a funny feeling it might stick to the ceiling. Your friend, Princess Laurel. Click on the picture when you are done. I'll be back a little later in case you have another letter to send. Look. Okay, let's write to the prince. Swim. I bet when you're home, you like to swim. Read. I bet when you're home, you like to read. Swim. Play checkers. I bet when you're home, you like to play checkers. Ride my bike. I sometimes like to ride my bike. Sleep. I sometimes like to sleep. Eat ice cream. I sometimes like to eat ice cream. Climb trees. If a new friend came to my house, we could climb trees. Paint. If a new friend came to my house, we could paint. Tell jokes. <laughs> if a new friend came to my house, we could tell jokes. Curious. I like friends who are curious. Green. I like friends who are green. Kind. I like friends who are kind. Love, Sam. Cry. P.S. Do you ever cry? Get angry. P.S. Do you ever get angry? Snore. P.S. Do you ever snore? Cry. Speedy Snail here. Got anything to mail? Oh, a letter. This could take a while. <coughs> Special delivery for Sam from Prince Albert. Dear Sam, even though princes live happily ever after, that doesn't mean that they don't cry. I cry when I fall down. And I cry when someone hurts my feelings. But crying never stops me from having lots of fun being a prince. Your friend, Prince Albert. Adios. Look. We can write a letter again, or you can go back to the book. Okay, let's write to the Queen. Queen. Dear Queen, I think your house looks very haunted. I think your house looks very haunted. Big. I think your house looks very big. Fancy. 
I think your house looks very fancy. Frog. I think it is a good home for a frog. Ghost. I think it is a good home for a ghost. Family. I think it is a good home for a family. Mattresses. You have many mattresses in it. Peas. You have many peas in it. Jewels. You have many jewels in it. Hide and seek. Do you ever play hide and seek in your castle? Marbles. Do you ever play marbles in your castle? Checkers. Do you ever play checkers in your castle? Sincerely, Sam. Flowers. P.S. You should have more flowers in your castle. Mattresses. P.S. You should have more mattresses in your castle. Children. P.S. You should have more children in your castle. Speedy Snail here. Got anything to mail? Oh, a letter. This could take a while. Special delivery for Sam from the Queen. Dear Sam, Yes, we love checkers. We have a whole room just for playing it. We use the floor as a checkerboard. We use trained frogs as checkers. Some frogs wear red hats and some wear black hats. When we say jump, they really jump high. Oh, it's fun. Sincerely, the Queen. Adios. Look. Okay, let's write to the P. Dear P, it must be exciting to be round. It must be exciting to be round. Green. It must be exciting to be green. Small. It must be exciting to be small. King. Do you ever wish you were a king? Giant. Do you ever wish you were a giant? Flower. Do you ever wish you were a flower? Boring. <laughs> Peas lead a very boring life. Happy. Peas lead a very happy life. Crowded. Peas lead a very crowded life. Story. I think you should write a story about being a pea. Song. I think you should write a song about being a P. Play. I think you should write a play about being a P. Roar. Sam. Fork. P.S. How does a P use a fork? Pen. P.S. How does a P use a pen? Telephone. P.S. How does a P use a telephone? Speedy Snail here. Got anything to mail? Oh, a letter. 
This could take a while. <coughs> Special delivery for Sam from the P. Dear Sam, A phone is very handy for calling all my friends. When my friends and I are on the phone, our talking never ends. You might think it's funny that I have so much to say. But once you get me talking, I can talk and talk all day. Your pal, the P. I'll be back a little later, in case you have another letter to send. Look, we can write a letter again, or you can go back to the book. Okay, let's write again later. Click on Sam to hear the story. Once upon a time, there was a prince. His parents wanted him to marry a princess. He wanted to marry someone who was kind and smart and funny. Take a trip, said his parents. Find a princess to marry. I'm a prince, and my parents want me to marry a princess. Son, it's time you took a trip to find a princess to marry. The prince took a long trip. He went to many castles. He met many princesses. One talked with her mouth full. One was a giant who needed a bed too big for the castle. One liked dogs better than princes. One was so young, she needed a baby bottle. I present to you... Princess Gigantus! If I was your princess, I would need a huge castle, about 100 miles long. <sniffs> Introducing the princess from the land of the Great Dane. I love poodles and dachshunds and chihuahuas, and Scottish Terriers, and pugs. <laughs> Introducing the princess from the land of hot buttered popcorn. If I was your princess, you know, I would like, you know. <laughs> Introducing Princess Goo Goo from the land of Nappy Nappy. My name is Princess Goo Goo and I want my mommy. I'll never find someone to marry, said the prince. There doesn't seem to be a princess in the whole world right for me to marry. Feeling sad, he went back to his castle. One princess was too big. Much too big. <coughs> Let's go. A storm is brewing. And we have a long journey back to the castle. That very night, there was a terrible storm. Boom! Flash! went the thunder and the lightning. The rain poured down. Suddenly, there was a knock on the castle door. The prince asked, Who would be out on a night like this? Besides me, of course. 
Bring me my umbrella, please. Thunder, lightning, storm. Who would be out on a night like this? Besides me, of course. His father, the king, asked, Who is it? The king opened the big door. A girl stood outside. She was wet from her head to her toes. Come in, you poor girl, said the king. You must stay at the castle until this terrible storm is over. Hello? Is there anybody there? Can I come in? I'm getting really wet. Anyone home? Who is it? Oh, come in, you poor girl. I would like to introduce this lovely girl. She will be staying until the storm passes. Please, join me for supper. Could someone fetch your dry clothes and bring us something to eat? The king took the girl to the dinner table. There sat the prince, who was also wet. I see you like storms too, said the girl, laughing. They began to talk. The girl was kind and smart and funny. She told the prince, that she was a princess from another village. By the end of the meal, the prince was in love. Frog, bring her some cake. She looks hungry. <laughs> I command you to bring us a cake, please. Poor frog. I hope he's okay. <sighs> You're really wet. I see you like storms too. Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, my name is Princess Laurel. She says she is a princess. Hmm. But where are her servants? The queen heard the girl talking. She says she is a princess. Ha! Huh, the queen thought. But where are her fine clothes? Where are her servants? She thought some more. Long ago. I had to prove that I was a real princess. She will have to prove it, too. The queen called her servants. Aha! I know what I'll do. I have the very test that only a real princess could possibly pass. Servants, bring me every mattress in the castle and stack them up. Bring every mattress in the castle, the queen ordered. Real princesses can fall asleep only on the softest of beds, she said. Put twenty of our softest mattresses one on top of another, and bring me one small pea, she added. All right. Only a princess will pass my test, but 
There is something else I need. Aha! I remember what I need. Fetch me a single pea. Lift the mattress. We'll see if she can feel that under all of those mattresses. At last the bed was ready. It was very tall. Now for the pea, said the queen. She put the small hard pea right at the bottom of the bed, beneath the very first mattress. If she's a real princess, she'll feel the pea under all of those mattresses. Lift it, I say, so I may place the pea underneath. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. What tall beds they have here. The girl looked surprised when she saw her room. What tall beds they have here, she said. She climbed up the ladder. Everybody wondered if she was going to be able to sleep. Can I have a glass of water, please? With a straw? Thanks. I needed that. Good night, Laurel. <sighs> Good night. What a soft bed. Ouch! The girl did not go right to sleep. She tossed and turned. She turned and tossed. She knew something was wrong. She climbed down the ladder. Ooh, now what? Hmm. Where could this lump be coming from? Hmm. Aha! I'll climb down and find it. The next morning, everyone was waiting for her. How did you sleep? The queen asked. Very well, thank you, said the girl. Then you are not a real princess, said the queen. Follow me and I'll show you why. Princess. So, how did you sleep? Very well, thank you. You see, a real princess couldn't have slept well in that bed. <laughs> she is not a real princess, and I can prove it. Follow me. Real princesses can fall asleep only on the softest of beds, said the queen. And this is not a soft bed. It's not? asked the girl. Look under the mattress, said the queen. But when the mattress was lifted, nothing was there. Look under the mattress. The pea! Oh no! Oh, where is it? Oh. 
Are you looking for this? asked the girl. She held up the little pea. I had to take it out. Who could get a good night's sleep on top of a pea? she asked. Everyone stared at the girl. Then they cheered with joy. <laughs> I guess everyone is looking for this? Yay! Aha! You are a real princess, said the queen. I knew it all along, said the king. You must marry our son, they said together. That was just fine with the prince and the princess. After all, they were already in love. Princess Laurel, welcome to our family. <laughs> I knew she was a princess all along. Ribbit. I'm sure glad I passed the princess test. The prince and the princess were soon married. Of course, they lived happily ever after. And every year, on the date they first met, they gave everyone in the kingdom a small, hard pea for good luck. Laurel, will you be my wife? I will. When you were the princess and the hi, Cl I'm Princess Laurel. You'll never believe what I had to go through to prove I was a princess. Click here if you want me to read the story. Click here and we can read the story together. Let's read the story together. Here are the special words in this story. Mattress. P. Prince, Princess, Queen, Mary, Castle, Kingdom. My name is Laurel. I want to tell you a story. It's about how I met Prince Albert. Once upon a time, Albert used to be sad and lonely. That was before he knew there was a princess like me. Son, it's time you took a trip to find a princess to marry. Right. Albert had looked hard for a princess to marry. He had met all kinds of princesses. He met a big one, a small one, one who liked dogs more than princes and one who talked with her mouth full. But he didn't meet anyone like me. Albert wasn't happy after that trip. He thought he'd never find someone to marry. I wish I had known Albert then. I would have tried to make him feel better. But I was at home. Let's go. A storm is brewing. 
And we have a long journey back to the castle. One day, I went for a ride on my horse. I rode a long way from home. A sudden storm appeared. Boom! Flash! The thunder and lightning scared my horse. He threw me off and ran away. I saw a castle. Someone was standing on the castle wall. I went there to ask for help. Who would be out on a night like this? Besides me, of course. I thought they would never open the door. At last, someone asked, Who is it? A king opened the door. I was surprised. Come in, you poor girl, he said. He seemed very nice. He invited me in and told me I could stay in his castle until the storm was over. Who is it? Oh, come in, you poor girl. I would like to introduce this lovely girl. She will be staying until the storm passes. Please, join me for supper. Could someone fetch your dry clothes and bring us something to eat? The king led me to the dinner table. A young prince was sitting there. He was as wet as I was. I see you like storms too, I said. We began to talk. We were having such fun that I almost forgot to tell him who I was. My name is Princess Laurel, I said at last. By the way, my name is Princess Laurel. She says she is a princess. Hmm. But where are her servants? Albert believed I was a princess. I could tell. But I had a feeling his mother would not believe me. I had a feeling I'd get a princess test. But which test would it be? The alligator test? The juggling test? I'd have to wait and see. Aha! I know what I'll do. I have the very test that only a real princess could possibly pass. Servants, bring me every mattress in the castle and stack them up. The queen got my bed ready. Bring every mattress in the castle, she ordered. She told the servants to put the mattresses on top of each other. Then she asked for a pea. Why did she want a pea? I didn't remember learning about peas at princess school. Aha! I remember what I need. Fetch me a single pea. <coughs> Lift the mattress. We'll see if she can feel that under all of those mattresses. Now for the pea, said the queen. She put the pea under the first mattress. Now, I have heard of putting a tooth under a pillow so that the tooth fairy will come, but why would you put a pea under a mattress? Is there a vegetable fairy? Lift it, I say, so I may place the pea underneath. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. What tall beds they have here. <sighs> then I remembered a test my grandmother told me about. 
the queen was giving me the pee under the mattress test. I'm glad I have a good memory, I thought. I'll play along. I went to my room. What tall beds they have here, I said loudly. Then I climbed the ladder. What a soft bed. Ouch! What a soft bed, I said, louder still. I wanted to go to sleep, but I had some work to do first. I had to find the pea. It wasn't in my bed. So I climbed down and looked in between all 20 mattresses. Finally, I found it underneath them all. I took it out, of course. I was tired. Aha! I'll climb down and find it. <sighs> the next morning, everyone was waiting for me. How did you sleep? asked the queen. Very well, thank you, I said. I knew what she would say next. Then you are not a real princess, she said. Follow me, and I'll show you why. I knew she was going to say that. She is not a real princess, and I can prove it. Follow me. Real princesses can only fall asleep on the softest of beds, she told everyone. And this is not a soft bed. It's not? I asked. It was very soft. After I took out that pee. Look under the mattress, she said. Of course, nothing was there. The pee? Oh, no. Oh, where is it? Are you looking for this? I asked the queen. I held out the pea. Who could get a good night's sleep on top of a pea? I asked. I could see that the queen was surprised. Everyone else seemed really happy that I found the pea. They all cheered. You are a real princess, the queen finally said. I knew it all along, said the king. You must marry our son, they said together. Do you know what Albert and I thought about that idea? We thought it was great. <laughs> Albert and I were soon married. We want everyone to be as happy as we are. So once a year, we give everyone in the kingdom a pea for good luck. I hope that when we go visit my parents, my mom doesn't give Albert a test. <coughs> Click on one. All right. When you are ready to. The princess and the pea. Click on the character. Hi. I'm Prince Albert. Thanks for picking me. I'll tell you what really happened. One rainy night, when a special girl showed up at our castle. Click here if you want me to read the story. Click here and we could read the story together. Let's read the story together. Here are the special words in this story. Mattress, pea, prince, princess, queen, Mary, castle, kingdom. 
My name is Albert. I am a prince. You might think that being a prince is always fun, but it's not. For a whole year, my parents sent me on trips to find someone to marry. They didn't care who I married, as long as I married a real princess. Son, it's time you took a trip to find a princess to marry. Right. What is so special about a real princess anyway? I just wanted to find someone who was kind and smart and funny. My jester found many princesses for me to meet. Each one was very different. But I didn't find the girl I was looking for. I felt really sad. I must have met every princess in the whole world. What would I do? I had to marry a real princess. And I couldn't find one who was right for me. I decided to go home and tell my parents, I am not getting married. And that's that. Let's go. A storm is brewing. And we have a long journey back to the castle. On the way back, it began to rain. It was a big, loud storm. When I got back to the castle, I climbed to the tower wall. I wanted to listen to the thunder. Suddenly, I heard a knock on the door. I thought, who would be out on a night like this? Besides me, of course. Who would be out on a night like this? Besides me, of course. I couldn't see who it was. I listened, but I didn't hear anything more. Maybe there wasn't anyone out there after all. Finally, I heard the castle door open. Who could that be, I wondered? Who is it? Oh, come in, you poor girl. I would like to introduce this lovely girl. She will be staying until the storm passes. Please, join me for supper. Could someone fetch your dry clothes and bring us something to eat? I went to the dining room. Just then, my father brought a very wet girl to the table. She was as wet as I was. Who was this girl? We both looked so funny that we began to laugh. She told me that she was a princess from a nearby village. She said her name was Laurel. By the way, my name is Princess Laurel. She says she is a princess. Hmm. But where are her servants? I was beginning to like Laurel. She was not afraid of storms. She had a happy laugh, and she was a real princess. Wow. But then I thought about my mother. I knew she would make Laurel prove she was a real princess. I remembered hearing about the princess tests. They were not easy. Aha! I know what I'll do. I have the very test that only a real princess could possibly pass. Servants, bring me every mattress in the castle and stack them up. After dinner, I heard my mother upstairs. She sounded busy. I wondered if she was planning one of her tests. Bring me all the mattresses, she shouted. Uh-oh, what sort of test was this? I wondered. 
and bring me one very small pea, she said quietly. Aha! I remember what I need. Fetch me a single pea. <coughs> Lift the mattress. We'll see if she can feel that under all of those mattresses. Aha! It was the pea under the mattress test. My mother was going to put a small pea under twenty mattresses. Laurel would have to sleep on top of the mattresses. If she didn't feel the pea, my mother would say that she was not a real princess. Don't you think that's ridiculous? Lift it, I say, so I may place the pea underneath. Good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. What tall beds they have here. <sighs> My mother showed Laurel the bed. I wondered if Laurel thought that we all slept in such tall beds. How embarrassing. I hoped she wasn't afraid of heights. But mostly, I hoped that she would feel the pee. I checked on Laurel several times. What a soft bed. Ouch! Soon, I had to go to sleep myself. I wondered what she was doing in her room. I wondered if she was sleeping. Mostly, I wondered if she had felt the pee. How big a lump could a little pee make? Anyway, aha! I'll climb down and find it. <sighs> the next morning, we all asked Laurel how she had slept. This might sound funny. But I hoped she hadn't slept well. But she told us she had slept well. That figures. Laurel was the first girl I really liked, and I wouldn't be able to marry her because she couldn't pass a silly test. She is not a real princess, and I can prove it. Follow me. My mother marched us to Laurel's bedroom. She planned to show us why a real princess could not have slept on the bed. But when she lifted the mattress, there was no pee. I didn't know what happened. Maybe a mouse had eaten it, or maybe it had gotten mashed. The pee! Oh no! Where is it? <gasps> Are you looking for this? Laurel asked, holding up the pea. She had felt the pea. She had taken it out so she could sleep. I knew she was smart. The servants cheered. I cheered. My father cheered. My mother did not cheer. She hates being wrong. After that, my parents said we should get married. They said they were happy to have found a real princess for me. That was fine with me. I had found someone who was kind and smart <laughs> and funny. It was also fine with Laurel. I guess she loved me too. Everyone was happy, even my mother. <laughs> Laurel and I did get married, and we are very happy. But there is still something I wonder about.
How did Laurel know the pea was under all those mattresses? Did she feel it? Or did she find out some other way? Maybe someday I'll hear her side of the story. Ribbit. Click on one of these buttons to... Okay! When you are ready to... The goose that laid the golden egg. Click on the character you want to tell the story. Rawr. Thanks for choosing me, Sam the Lion. Let me tell you the story of the goose that laid the golden egg. Click here if you want me to read the story. Click here and we can read the story together. Let's read the story together. Here are the special words in this story. Eggs, goose, feathers, golden, farm, farmers, money, stomach. Click on a page to go to that page. Let's match and order things from the story. Count two. Not again! Oh, my story map is a mess! You can help read a rabbit. Click on Story Match to match words and pictures. Click on Story Order to put events in the right order. Okay, let's match words to pictures from the story. Barn. Barn. Milk. Milk. Cow. Cow. Strawberries. Strawberries. Mmm, yum. Watermelon. Watermelon. Mmm, yum. All right. Now all the words match the pictures, so I can read my story map. Time for a party! Click on me and you can play the map game again. All right! Count two. Not again! Oh, my story map is a mess! You can help read a rabbit. Okay, let's put everything in order. The goose laid the goose laid her first golden egg. The farmer the farmers used the golden eggs to buy lots of things. They bought fine clothes and new things for the house. The farmer asked the goose to lay two golden eggs. The farmer got his axe and went to the goose's nest. The farmer asked the goose to lay two golden eggs. The farmer asked the goose to lay two golden eggs. Lay me two golden eggs. The farmer checked for more golden eggs. <sighs> Yahoo! Now everything is in order so I can read my story map. You did it! Time for a party! Click on me and you can play the map game again. Let's write a letter. Okay, let's write to the goose. Dear Goose, 
Did you learn to lay golden eggs in a school? Did you learn to lay golden eggs in a school? A pond. Did you learn to lay golden eggs in a pond? A barn. Did you learn to lay golden eggs in a barn? Castle. If I had your eggs, I would make a golden castle. Breakfast. <coughs> if I had your eggs, I would make a golden breakfast. Cake. If I had your eggs, I would make a golden cake. A giant. From now on, give your eggs to a giant. Different farmers. From now on, give your eggs to different farmers. My class. From now on, give your eggs to my class. Touch. Next time, don't let anyone touch your golden eggs. See. Next time, don't let anyone see your golden eggs. Roll. Next time, don't let anyone roll your golden eggs. Your friend Sam. Talked. P.S. What would have happened if the farmer knew you talked? Might leave. P.S. Hid eggs. P.S. What would have happened if the farmer knew you hid eggs? Speedy Snail here. Got anything to mail? Oh, a letter. This could take a while. <coughs> Special delivery for Sam from the Goose. Dear Sam, those golden eggs only caused trouble. The farmer wanted the eggs so badly. If he knew I was hiding them, he would dig up his whole garden looking for them. But he wouldn't find them. Do you remember why? Your friend, the goose. I'll be back a little later in case you have another letter to send. Look, we can write a letter again or you can go back to the book. Okay, let's write to Mr. Farmer. Crack. You can't crack golden eggs. Fry. You can't fry golden eggs. Grow. You can't grow golden eggs. Hatching. Eggs are for hatching. Eating. Eggs are for eating. Rolling. Eggs are for rolling. Hatching. A beehive. I think you should have traded the golden eggs for a beehive. A cow. I think you should have traded the golden eggs for a cow. Magic beans. I think you should have traded the golden eggs for magic beans. Food. Wouldn't you rather have food than gold? A farm. Wouldn't you rather have a farm than gold? Friends. Thank you.
Wouldn't you rather have friends than gold? Love, Sam. Baseball cards. P.S. Next time you should collect baseball cards instead of golden eggs, white eggs. P.S. Next time you should collect white eggs instead of golden eggs, stamps. P.S. Next time you should collect stamps instead of golden eggs. Speedy Snail here. Got anything to mail? Oh, a letter. This could take a while. Special delivery for Sam from Mr. Farmer. Dear Sam, magic beans would have been a very clever trade. When giant beanstalks grow up tall, they make the perfect shade. I would plant some in my front yard. I would plant some in the back. Did I ever tell you that my middle name is Jack? Your friend, Mr. Farmer. I'll be back a little later in case you have another letter to send. Look, we can write a letter again, or you can go back to the book. Okay, let's write to Mrs. Farmer. Dear Mrs. Farmer, Dog! What if your dog could talk? Shoes! What if your shoes could talk? Strawberries! Mmm! What if your strawberries could talk? Rocks. What if your chicken laid rocks? Avocados. What if your chicken laid avocados? Avocados. Strawberries. Baseballs. What if your chicken laid baseballs? Dance lessons. What if your cow gave dance lessons? Chocolate milk. Mmm. What if your cow gave chocolate milk? Soda. What if your cow gave soda? Park. You could turn your farm into a park. Circus. You could turn your farm into a circus. Restaurant. You could turn your farm into a restaurant. Circus. Love, Sam. Geese. P.S. I bet lots of geese would visit you. Scientists. P.S. I bet lots of scientists would visit you. Soda. Scientists. Kids. P.S. I bet lots of kids would visit you. Speedy Snail here. Got anything to mail? Oh, a letter. This could take a while. Special delivery for Sam from Mrs. Farmer. Dear Sam, I liked your letter. Do you ever drink soda? I don't drink soda very often. But if my cow gave soda, I might make an ice cream soda every now and then. 
I hope she would give me root beer. Your friend, Mrs. Farmer. I'll be back a little later, in case you have another letter to send. Look, we can write a letter again, or you can go back to the book. Okay, let's write again later. Long ago, a husband and wife lived on a farm. At night, they would sit and talk. We have no money, he would say. But we have everything we need, she would reply. We have a horse to help in the fields. We have a cow to give milk. We have geese to lay eggs. We have everything we need. We have a horse to help in the fields. <laughs> we don't have much money. Honey, we have everything we need. The husband and wife worked hard on their farm. Every day, they fed the animals. They milked the cow. And they worked in the fields from morning until night. The last job of the day was to gather the eggs the geese laid. One goose had feathers as white as snow. She was a special friend to the farmer. Lay me an egg for a fine cake, my friend, he said one day. The goose laid an egg. It was unlike any egg he had ever seen. Boy, what's wrong with my tummy? Lay me an egg so I can make a cake. Uh, oh. uh. <gasps> <gasps> the man picked the egg up. It was heavier, harder, and shinier than a normal egg. It looks like gold, he said. He tried many different things to see what the egg was made of. Finally, he was sure. The egg is gold. Real gold, he cried. It's harder than a normal egg. Hmm, it looks like gold. It's heavier than a normal egg. The egg is gold. It's real gold. The goose has laid a golden egg. Golden egg? <laughs> Show me. He ran to the house to show his wife the egg. 
The goose has laid a golden egg, he told her. She laughed. A golden egg indeed. But when she saw the egg, she knew it was true. Do you think the goose will lay another golden egg tomorrow? She asked. A golden egg? <laughs> Indeed. I sure hope they don't want any more eggs. One stomach ache is enough. <laughs> A golden egg indeed. Well, bring it in. It is gold. Do you think the goose will lay another golden egg tomorrow? Lay me a golden egg, my friend. <gasps> the next morning, the husband and wife woke up early. The man went straight to the barn. Most of the geese were busy laying normal eggs. Lay a golden egg, my friend, said the farmer to the goose. The goose laid an egg. Sure enough, it was gold. <gasps> My tummy hurts. Lay me an egg, mon chéri. We're rich, cried the husband and wife. But we already have everything we need, said the wife. But we don't have everything we want, said the husband. Just think of all the things we can buy. We're rich. Yeah, we're rich. We already have everything we need. But we don't have everything we want. Every day after that, the white goose laid one golden egg. The husband and wife began to buy everything in sight. They bought fine clothes and new things for the house. They even sold their old horse and cow and bought new ones. Lay me a golden egg. Aunt. Uh, bring us over some fine clothes and fancy things for the house. Here's the stuff you ordered. One night, the husband and wife were talking. Are you happy with all our new things? asked the woman. Yes, said the man. But now that we have so much, I want more. If only the goose could lay more than one egg a day. I'm not very happy. This egg business makes my tummy hurt. Pumpkin, are you happy? Yes. Well, n not really. If only the white goose could lay two eggs, we could have a new house and a pig. It's for you. 
The next day, the man went to the barn early. He made a new house for the goose. He gave her some special food. Lay me two golden eggs, he told the goose. But the goose laid only one golden egg. Lay me two golden eggs. Fancy food? A new house? Fresh straw? All that for laying an egg? The man was angry. He said to his wife, I have treated that goose like a queen. But she still laid only one golden egg. She is not trying hard enough, said his wife. I'll bet she has lots of golden eggs inside her. Maybe we should open her up and take a look. I made a new house for the goose. I, I gave her fancy food, but she still laid one golden egg. There's more eggs inside of her. I know it. Only one egg? You said you were going to bring me two eggs. There's no more eggs inside of me. If there were, they could have them. I'll bet she has lots of golden eggs inside her. Maybe we should open her up and take a look. This is where she's hiding all the eggs. The man got his axe. He went to the goose's nest. He grabbed for the goose. But all he got was a bunch of feathers. The goose was gone. Maybe I shouldn't cut her at all. Nah, then we can't have the golden egg. Now, where did my wife say to cut? Now, don't be scared. This won't hurt a bit. Where did she go? I've lost my friend, the goose. No more eggs? Well... We didn't need all that junk anyway. The farmers sat sadly on their porch. I've lost our goose, said the husband. No more golden eggs, said the wife. How greedy we have been, said the husband. All that gold made us forget the things that really matter. No more golden eggs? Oh, dear. I've lost my <gasps> goose, and she was so good to us. From now on, this is all we'll ever need. From that day on, the husband and wife rose each morning. They worked in their fields from morning until night. They decided that the only gold they really needed was the golden corn in the fields and the golden light of the sun. I got out just in time.
I'm so happy. I think I'll milk the cow. On All right. When you the goose that laid the gold. Hi, I'm the goose. Cl it's me, all right. Let me tell you about the time I laid a golden egg. This story's worth its weight in gold. Click here if you want me to read the story. Click here, and we can read the story together. Good choice. Let's read the story together. Here are the special words in this story. Eggs, goose, feathers, golden, farm, farmers, money, stomach. Have you ever met a talking goose? Well, Talking is not the only surprising thing I can do, but let me start by telling you about the people who take care of me. They are very nice, but they usually don't have much money. And that is where all the trouble began. <laughs> I used to watch the husband and wife work. They took good care of us animals. They made sure we had everything we needed. They worked hard in the fields. They didn't stop working until the sun went down. I get tired just thinking about it. <sighs> <laughs> Laying eggs was my job on the farm. I liked it when the man came to get the eggs. One day, something strange happened. Lay me an egg for a fine cake, my friend. The man said to me, My stomach hurt that day. I laid an egg all right, but it was not normal. <coughs> the man picked the egg up. It was very heavy. No wonder my stomach had hurt. I was happy the egg was out. The man was happy too. The egg is gold. It's real gold, he said. Gold? What was gold? The egg is gold. It's real gold. The goose has laid a golden egg. Golden egg? <laughs> Show me. The man ran to the house. I followed him. I didn't know why he was so excited. What could you do with a golden egg? When his wife saw the egg, she was excited too. Do you think the goose will lay another golden egg tomorrow? She asked. I hoped not. One stomach ache was enough. It 
is gold. Do you think the goose will lay another golden egg tomorrow? Lay me a golden egg, my friend. <gasps> the next morning, the man came early. Lay a golden egg, my friend, he said. My stomach hurt again. It felt like I had a watermelon in it. That morning, I laid another golden egg. The man and his wife were excited about my egg. We're rich, they cried. Rich? What did that mean? They started talking about things they wanted. I wanted something, too. I wanted my stomach aches to go away. From then on, Things were different on the farm. The man and woman didn't work much anymore. They didn't take good care of us animals. They only cared about buying things. I still did my job. I laid them a golden egg every day. One night, I heard the husband and wife talking. Are you happy with all our new things? asked the wife. The man said he wanted more things. He wanted me to lay lots of eggs every day. What did he think I was? An egg machine? It's for you. The next day, the farmer made a new house for me. Lay me two golden eggs, he said. Didn't the man know how heavy the eggs were? I'd like to see him carry two golden eggs in his stomach. I could only lay one egg. The man and his wife were mad at me. They thought I wasn't trying hard enough. They thought I had lots of eggs inside my stomach. They wanted to cut me open to find out. Cut me open? Talk about stomach eggs! I'll bet she has lots of golden eggs inside her. Maybe we should open her up and take a look. This is where she's hiding all the eggs. I flew to the barn. I made a pretend goose out of my feathers. Then I packed my bags and left. I left just in time. The farmer came into the barn with an axe. It would have been bye-bye Goosey if I had stayed. Now don't be scared. This won't hurt a bit. <laughs> Where did she go? I've lost my friend, the Goose. No more eggs? Well, we didn't need all that junk anyway. The man was sad. I think he felt bad about what he had almost done. No more golden eggs, said the woman.
How greedy we have been, said the man. I thought about my shiny golden eggs. Those eggs had made a lot of trouble. From now on, this is all we'll ever need. The man and his wife went back to their old ways. They worked hard on their farm. I moved to a new farm. I still lay golden eggs, but no one here knows about them. That's because I hide them under the onions. Onions are good for something. Click on one of these buttons. All right. When you the goose that laid the golden egg. Click on the key. Well, hello. Thanks for choosing me. You can call me Mr. Farmer. Let me tell you what happened when my favorite goose started laying golden eggs. Click here if you want me to read the story. Click here and we can read the story together. Let's read the story together. Here are some of the special words in this story. Eggs, goose, feathers, golden, farm, farmers, money, stomach. Where would you like to live? On a sunny beach? In a castle? On the moon? If you ask me, the best place to live is on a farm. My wife and I are farmers. We like to work outside in the fresh air. Often, we don't have any money. But as my wife always says, we have everything we need. Farm life is fun, but it's not easy. From morning until night, we take care of our animals and work in the fields. We only plant things that we like. We grow corn and strawberries and carrots, but we never grow onions. <laughs> At the end of the day, I gather the goose eggs. Sometimes I talk to the geese. Lay me an egg for a fine cake, my friend, I said to my favorite goose one day. I was dreaming of a fluffy white cake with strawberry frosting. My goose laid me an egg, a strange egg. <laughs> I picked up the egg. It was hard and heavy. It was shiny. It was very strange. It looks like gold, I said. But it couldn't be. After all, geese don't just go around laying golden eggs. So I did some tests. And do you know what? That egg was gold. The egg is gold. It's real gold. The goose has laid a golden egg. Golden egg? <laughs> show me. I couldn't wait to show my wife. The goose has laid a golden egg, I cried. My wife didn't believe me. She thought I was making a yoke. I, I mean, a joke. But when she saw it, 
She knew it was gold. She asked if the goose would lay another golden egg. I wondered the same thing. It is gold. Do you think the goose will lay another golden egg tomorrow? Lay me a golden egg, my friend. The next morning, I went straight to the barn. I wanted one more golden egg. Lay a golden egg, my friend, I told my goose. I thought she would never lay the egg. But when she did, it was gold. We're rich, we said. We already have everything we need, said my wife. We might not have needed anything, but we wanted a lot. You can't believe all the ideas we had. What would you buy with a golden egg? From that day on, life was great. Every day the goose laid one golden egg. Every day we bought things for ourselves and the house and the farm. We bought everything we could think of. Then we thought of more things. And we bought them too. Are you happy with all our new things? asked my wife one night. Yes, I was happy. But I would be twice as happy if the goose laid two eggs a day. I would be ten times as happy if she laid ten eggs a day. There had to be a way to get more eggs out of that goose. It's for you. The next morning, I ran straight to the barn. I wanted more golden eggs. I had to find a way to get them. I did everything I could think of to get the goose to lay two golden eggs. But she would only lay one. I had tried very hard to make the goose happy. Why wouldn't she give me more gold? I'll bet she has lots of golden eggs inside her, my wife said. My wife is very good in science. She knew just where the eggs would be. We decided to open the goose and take them out. I'll bet she has lots of golden eggs inside her. Maybe we should open her up and take a look. This is where she's hiding all the eggs. I got my axe and went to the barn. Questions kept popping into my head. Would it hurt the goose? How many eggs was the goose hiding inside? Three? Ten? A jillion? I grabbed for the goose. But she was gone. Now don't be scared. This won't hurt a bit. Where did she go? I've lost my friend, the goose. No more eggs? Well... We didn't need all that junk anyway. I felt terrible. I had almost hurt my favorite goose just because of some silly gold. And now my goose was gone. No more golden eggs, said my wife. 
but we found we didn't mind. There are more important things than gold, like being kind to animals and enjoying our farm. From now on, this is all we'll ever need. My wife and I sent all our new things back to the stores. Then we went back to work. My favorite goose didn't come back. And I can't say I blame her. Maybe she will someday. But if she does, I will never ask her for a golden egg again. Click on one of these buttons to play. OK! When you are ready to read, just click on one of the books. This is Pop. Choose a button or click outside of Pop to close Pop. Do you want to stop playing? Let's read again soon.